What if I told you that someday the way you manage your business will be like playing a game? Before I continue, who of you have played a game, be it on a mobile phone, a console, or a PC? Literally everyone, right? Well, personally, I've spent an inordinate amount of my life playing games as a kid, a young adult, and now through my five and seven-year-old who both love Fortnite um, and believe the only way to consume information and data is through their parents' phones. I vicariously live my gaming life through them, but I also believe soon through my job. The gaming industry is expected to grow to over $320 billion by the year 2026. That's the GDP of Denmark. The metaverse is extremely influenced by gaming. Gaming is the ultimate user experience. It puts you in the center. It makes you the hero. It brings your world alive. It, it, it shows you all the information you need to make the decisions you need to take. And it brings the reality of playing in a simulation directly to you. It's far more user-centric, I believe, than spreadsheets, um, slides, and two-dimensional business reports, which I think we can all agree on. And we all know in today's digital economy, it's the experiences uh, that give you the best experience which win. Did you know, though, that the dictionary definition of innovation is the act of innovating? Did you know that Industry 4.0 is the one that came after Industry 3.0? And who knows what Industry 1 and 2 are all about, right? Oh, and that concept digital? Yeah, what is that all about? In my career, I've always been the digital guy, so trying to make sense to my superiors of what this thing called the cloud is about, or do we really need to consider this robotic process automation thing, or hey, what's this AI stuff and how do we do it? And then, of course, we get the metaverse. I'm pretty sure all of you have seen your feeds uh, swamped with this word. All of these terms do fill us up with angst. They make us wonder, how do we deal with this? Ooh, what do I need to know? Why does it seem like everyone else knows about this but not me? I'm here to tell you, don't worry about that. Why this matters and why I believe this is speech worthy is because the metaverse is about gaming. Gaming is that ultimate experience. And if anything, follow the money. A lot of investment is going into the space, but there's no, there's no real answer, and I'll unpack this a little bit for you right now. Why is the metaverse a buzzword? Think about e-commerce. Did you think 10 years ago you'd be able to go on a mobile phone and order dog food and receive it in less than an hour? Scratch that. Did you think you could do that three years ago? Probably not. Now, why is this meaningful? These things have a habit of starting slowly, and then they happen suddenly. It's a number of converging parallels that come together to give you this experience, which we can call e-commerce. But that didn't just happen. Many years ago, you wouldn't trust the digital payment gateway. Now they're quite seamless, and you don't really wonder if someone's going to steal your credit card details when you press that checkout button. The cloud, it brings you hundreds and thousands of products to the palm of your hand. What's in the palm of your hand? a mobile application with amazing user experience that gives you that dopamine rush when you click that button. And um, of course, machine learning, which helps you personalize those things to make you feel guilty or perhaps make, make you take that next step, that little creepy feeling. All of these things don't just happen. These happen slowly, suddenly, and then they converge. And today it's commonplace. And I believe we can follow a similar route of thinking for the metaverse. So the metaverse is no more uh, virtual reality, mind the pun. It's also not a blockchain play. Like, don't worry, I've, I've lost more than enough money on NFTs and funny crypto assets, but um, I'm holding on now. It's all I really can do. Um, but the, the, the metaverse is influenced by gaming, and I'll tell you a little bit why I feel this is going to become more commonplace, in, especially in our businesses. 5G connectivity is going to be ridiculously fast, faster than what you have in your home uh, on your Wi-Fi. That's going to mean you can stream data in real time, or what we call the edge. That means you can then process artificial intelligence right then and there, mountains of data built on the cloud on very high-powered processing chips that help you say, hmm, after all these terabytes, this is what the machine thinks I should do, far faster than a human brain. Of course, powerful graphic cards that can be streamed either on a device or through the cloud themselves, and there's blockchain technology to split that up 
and microprocess it so you can experience that game-like experience on any device, on any panel of glass, basically. The ability to visualize these interconnected assets, machines, people, and things, I believe will endure. And that is now what we tend to call the Internet of Things, or what we can call the Internet of Everything. Various studies predict that the number of connected devices will double over the next three years. Why is that meaningful? Well, look at this person. She's a Gen Z. I consider myself a millennial, even though I'm on like, the far side of millennial, but still, I'll, I'll, I'll bank it for now. But particularly your Gen Zs, they are influenced by brands like TikTok, Spotify, Twitch, and OpenSea. Not sure all of us know exactly what those are, but what all of these experiences are built on is a thing of instant gratification. Dopamine rushes getting answers right then and there, getting that experience right then and there. And like I spoke about experiences earlier, it's those experiences that drive that feeling, that sensation that will endure. And this is what these people will expect to experience in their workplace. These people will also expect their homes to be connected and be able to take action wherever they are because of this always connected world. And I picture the way they, their brains are wired it's kind of similar to my dad's, who believes he still needs to print out a bank statement. It's the opposite, that different. And when our homes are connected, we will expect that same experience in our business world. To make this personal, my all-time favorite game was Command and & Conquer, and still is Command & Conquer. I'm not sure if everybody knows that, but what you would get was a bird's eye view of an environment. You'd then have to harvest resources, decide what to build, decide what armies to train and what armory to build, and then decide what is your strategy of attack to beat your opponent. It was a real living 3D rendition of how you could operate, how things would feel. You'd have information, you'd have warnings, alerts, you'd have people you could partner with, you could pick your side, partner with someone, bring in a different team. And I believe this kind of experience will be what we call digital twins. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what digital twins are. But as I said with gaming, this kind of experience and what we're used to and where the metaverse is going and the way technology is accelerating faster than Moore's law, some say, this, I feel, is going to be how businesses will operate. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into what digital twins are. The concept of a digital twin is a virtual representation of the physical environment in which a business or a context operates in. When all of these things are connected, you're able to generate that experience with real-life data and allow a person like that lady to walk into a factory. You can see a city from a bird's eye view and not say, hmm, what am I going to do today? With precision that the machine learning gives you, decide where you need to focus on, where are the main points of concern, and then trigger the appropriate action. You can go from the top to the bottom of a mine. You can see exactly what's there, but again, in that rich graphical format which I spoke about. And then, if something's faulty, which can cost you a lot of downstream costs, you can zoom in, send the right technician to fix that, 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 that component when needed, proactively, and operate this in real time. Now, as I move forward, I'd like to think of this as an always-on world, where games like World of Warcraft, you could always step into, you could always see what's happening, you could always partner with someone, are they, are they a friendly, are they not, but always have a plan of attack or a plan to, to take forward. And I feel this is experience is how we will operate. It will always be action-oriented, then research-based and reactive, which I feel a lot of the business world is about today. So again, as a digital guy and someone who's always just interested in applying technological concepts and making them real, I'm going to leave you with a few ways I, will, I would think about this going forward. Think of a connected everything. In this world, the protocols to connect devices, new and legacy, will be able to be connected. You'll be able to bring that information in. Just like a game where you're scouring your world and picking up objects, exploring inside of them, all of that sort of data will come into this user interface, and you'll be able to say, hmm, with all of this data, what do I do? When you have all of that data, you can start asking more questions, and then you can start saying, well, I wish if I had that data and plan for it. This is an interconnected world where there are no separations. On that topic, it will be a decentralized world. This is influenced by blockchain, but this is not a blockchain talk. 
In this world, the, the expectation will be that there are no middlemen or brokers. You can connect with whichever data you want. Similarly to in the game, where there's a barter, there's a, there's a token to be exchanged, there's something to be brought about. And when you start re understanding how NFTs work and how those will influence the metaverse, data in our business world will become your token. It will be live and everlasting. Once this thing is on, it's on. The games we play, where you have a save mode, but you can re-enter, will be sort of like our business experiences. I kind of picture it one day as, maybe it's Sunday evening, and you want to see what's happening in your factory in China. You can zoom in, you can know exactly what's going on, where the problems might exist, where there are over and under allocations. This world will be live and everlasting like a game. And if, if this was the experience that, or if this is the experience we'll be um, entitled to one day, how would you operate? How would you think about it? What would change? How would you take work with you? Data sovereignty, often the most boring part of this whole digital world, but critical. And as I mentioned, data is your token. So how will you protect it? There'll be many protocols to protect your data, but as I said, as a token, that thing that sits in your proverbial wallet, that will be your entry point. And in this world, it will be all about permission. If you have permission to connect, that data comes alive. And the protocols that the metaverse and blockchain are bringing about will make that interchange of data realistic and real and relevant to you. And because we're able to process this a lot quicker, because there'll be algorithms that help us sort it out and the way that cloud technology is evolving, all of a sudden data sovereignty becomes extremely possible, real, and hopefully safer. Although at the same time, I would caution that the, the complexity of crime also, and the sophistication of criminals also increases, something to think about. And my favorite concept is this of community. Gaming has always been about community. There are forums discussing games. In, in, in Clash of Clans, I had friends who'd meet in the kitchen and discuss how they were going to attack an enemy clan, and this was around the water cooler. So this thinking is not new, it's normal, it's natural, the user experience trumps everything when you think about how a game operates because of all that information. So if you do think about community, think about in this world, who would you partner with? Who would you bring into your tribe, into your clan? How would you bring those parties about? They could be third parties, they could be new people. The world doesn't matter anymore in the metaverse because it's one virtual world where anything and everything is possible, brought about through that digital twin concept. So in closing, I want to say, this is the start. And we don't know the answer, no one does. But these things, I think, will be relevant. Stay inquisitive, we have to stay inquisitive. The world is evolving faster than ever, and it will never be the slow, famous words. So stay inquisitive, keep reading about it, and don't feel guilty. I always do, FOMO is also one of those things that drive us these days. Don't feel guilty for not knowing. Nobody does. Tons of money has already been wasted in this metaverse thing. But like I said, follow it and see where the investments are going because those things will start permeating slowly, then suddenly. Then make it personal. Once you start getting a grasp, start relating it to your world. Discuss it. Socialize it. Talk to your colleagues. Start thinking about how this will be. Have an opinion because when you have an opinion, you're able to start shaping how you would operate in this world, what it means to you, because the metaverse will mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And finally, find your inner gamer. Think about those experiences that excited you. Think about your favorite game. Think about how that user experience can relate to you one day. Because one day, the decisions you make will have a far greater impact than beating your last high score. Thank you.